The Super Media Bros Podcast is a founding member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Super Media Bros. both had a combined budget of about four million dollars and here's the weird thing that budget for each film isn't even split down the middle one actually costs more to make and what's weird is it could have fooled me on which one welcome to episode 224 of the super media bros podcast i'm richie i'm confused Devin. that's right and we're here with cult cinema showdown 97 Captain America from 1990, the Canon Films 21st Century Corporation, Captain America versus the Fantastic Four, the unreleased Fantastic Four produced by Roger Corman from 1994. Yeah, we're not kidding. Uh, These movies were done on the cheap. And honestly, as somebody who grew up watching a lot of cheap B movies, I oftentimes do appreciate that. I mean, obviously, me too. I grew up watching this specific Captain America. I remember going to video stores like when whenever our video store closed down and I rented elsewhere, I was like, oh, they have this. And I brought it home. And, you know, as a child, I'm like, oh, my God, it's Marvel. So I don't give a shit. I see the dude in the costume. I'm going to watch it. And, you know, you don't pay attention to story when you're that young. You just want to see the heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I am with the uh, 1970 version. The one with like the big ass fucking helmet and everything. And the clear shield. Yeah. uh, And. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mandela Effect could be in place here. They had a second one as well, right? Yeah, and it was still way back then. Yeah, like I, I distinctly remember on like the sci-fi channel them playing it and he's like on his motorcycle in the fucking like on the beach or something. Right. And if y'all can believe it out there, that's not even the Captain America movies that we're about to talk about. <laughs> no, we just got sidetracked, but Yeah. Like, it, it's weird. Like they have several of these and people Only remember the 90s one and the good ones. Yeah. So let's jump into Captain America from 1990, directed by Albert Pune, who has done shit like Dollman. I mean, the dude has done a lot of B movies and direct to video film. I mean, there's a lot. This movie actually was called Blood Match in the Philippines. (laughs) What? Yeah. Can you imagine in the Philippines? They're just like from Marvel Comics and they see the big shield and they're like, oh, yeah, Captain America, Blood Match. What the fuck? Now, why is that? Is there a particular reason? I have no clue. Because I can't recall in the 90s any historical significant beef. Ah, I couldn't tell you, dude. I mean, granted, like, I feel like the 90s, there's not very many American history classes on, but I, I would assume that would have been touched upon. I'm really not sure other than the fact that it... Okay, so we all know... The Red Skull and Captain America are like, you know, arch enemies and shit. Yeah. Red Skull was like a German Nazi guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So tell me why in this movie, the Red Skull is not even Johan. He is Tadzio DeSantis and he's from Italy. But he's still a Nazi commander. Yeah. And the way it works is he's... It's in 1936, and he gets kidnapped by a lot of these, like, Nazi soldiers, and his whole family gets just shot the fuck up in front of him. I actually did like that segment. It kind of gave me the vibes of, like, the first X-Men movie. Yeah, like with Magneto and shit. Yeah, so I, I appreciated that. Right, and it, and it gives you a little bit of hopeful vibe, like, oh, this movie might be pretty decent, and they brainwash him. Like, they put him in this electric chair-looking fucking thing, and they just brainwash his ass. And then one of the women that is in charge of this shit bails out because she's like, oh, it's a fucking kid. I'm not doing this. And she fucking splits. And then it cuts to like fucking years later. And this is how we get introduced to Steve Rogers. He's just in this kitchen looking at his mom and you find out that he's got polio. And, that, you know, that's the thing about this Steve Rogers is that's his illness. He's, he's disqualified from being able to join the army because he has polio. But they just give him this really awkward looking limp. 
It, yeah, I mean, there's really not a lot to it. They actually get to his fucking origin like right in the first 10 minutes as far as, okay, he was selected out of like 100 candidates to be the perfect dude for this. And he's got a girlfriend and all this other shit. Well, they come to pick him up and I have to laugh because he's getting in the car and the lady that is going to be doing this shit to him is the same chick that bailed on the kid who is going to be Red Skull. And I guess this is her trying to find some redemption by creating a soldier that's going to fight against this shit. I guess. Uh, yeah. It's kind of, I feel like you have other options there, but you do you, boo boo. Oh, I know. Right. And I think the thing that cracks me up the most about this scene in particular is he's sitting in the car and he's just kind of like waving bye to his family and shit. Cause they had this whole party for him or whatever. This Steve Rogers is just like smoking a cigarette. Like it's going out of style. I understand that his time period. Sure. But Steve Rogers in none of the comics I can recall was a smoker. He, <laughs> he, he was always like, a fucking boy scout. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was laughing. I'm like, dude, there's all kinds of shit about this Steve Rogers that I'm just questioning front to back in this movie for real, though. Oh, you know what, though? There, There's one thing in particular. We'll get there later. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, too, and it's funny as shit. That's my cap. Right. So uh, the, he's smoking this cigarette, and the first fucking thought I had was he was probably sitting like, fuck it, if I get cancer right before the serum, it's going to cure me anyway. Fuck it. And he's... <laughs> Like he goes and he gets this shit done and it's almost like they blast him with these bright lights and shit. But there's these undercover people that are in the government working for the Red Skull and they assassinate the chick that fucking brought him to get the procedure done. And I'm thinking, why didn't they just kill him right there and kill everybody in the room? Because plot. <laughs> and that's the fucked up part is the whole idea about this movie eventually gets around to being like an environmentalist plot. Because this Captain America eventually just goes from getting the super soldier serum to automatically just having the fucking costume underneath some goddamn camouflage on a plane. Which just looked goofy. That's the thing about these movies that I find strange, though. Even the older ones, like they get the costume shit damn near right. And they get the look of it damn near right. And then they got to go and fuck it up by putting rubber ears on the fucking thing. It took me a moment to notice it. And once I... Dude, it was so bad. Yeah, it was pretty fucking bad, dude. And he goes in, right? And he goes in to fight the Red Skull because, oh, they're going to launch a rocket right to the White House. My man throws down with the skull like they're beating the shit out of each other at one point. But then Cab gets overpowered by his men and they strap him to this rocket because Red Skull's like, fuck you. I'm going to strap you to this goddamn rocket and launch you into the White House. He don't give a shit. Then he, I like to call him the red sauce skull, first of all, because the motherfucker is Italian red skull. So, I mean, it's red sauce. I mean, come on. I still don't understand. I, I don't either. Well, he fucking straps him to this rocket and, and okay. So, so cap fools him into coming close so he can grab his hand. He's like, dude, if I'm going, you're coming with me. And instead of like chopping Steve's hand off, because think about it this way. Steve can't necessarily free himself if he's got no hand to do it. He chops his own fucking hand off while Steve just pew on this rocket wasn't smart no dude your face when the rocket sequence happens when he's strapped to it and he's kicking this shit oh my god you're, dude y'all this man's mouth was just open and his jaw was smacking the floor because of the fucking disbelief dude it, it because it was it brought me back to the fucking a team how like you'll see like some off the wall physics like that make no sense whatsoever not even trying to make sense, but then it's like, well, if you're like a, a first grader, I, I guess you could buy that. But no, you, 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 if you kick the bottom end of a rocket, okay, cool. In, in theory, physically, that would make the rocket go at a different angle. But my guy, super soldier serum or not, you no, you are not doing that shit and you're sure as fuck not doing it twice because motherfucker the, 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 I'm about to have a fucking aneurysm right now. Okay, <laughs> mother, 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 motherfucker, the, the fucking the goddamn the rocket. Okay, like like it, 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 it literally goes upward as he kicked downward at the tail end of it. So it goes up and then goes back down again like. 
No, because if it was already flying and you kicked it, then it would just keep going in that direction. What is happening? Logics. No, <laughs> Nothing's like, making sense. No, because the, the fucking thing was going like a goddamn roller coaster where it goes up and down. It, no. We are witnessing Devin's origin story as Captain aneurysm right I now. I don't know. I know, right? And to top this all off, there are these two children. One of them. Oh, fuck that shit. Yeah, that, one of them the, sees him with a fucking camera. I don't know how it got this clear of a zoom, but he snaps a picture of his face, right? Flies it over the White House. In crash lands in Alaska, where he's frozen, like, you know, we get the whole he's frozen in time for fucking several years. This kid and his best friend eventually grow up to be like one of them's a reporter and one of them grows up to be the president of the United States. Oh, fuck them both. Kill them. I know the, the fucking kid had the audacity to say we met. Bitch, you did not fucking meet him. I know. And, and you that's saw him from a distance. Yeah, it, it's so fucking stupid because like. After this time passes, it was like 50 fucking years and this kid becomes president and he's pushing this like environmental deal or some shit. That, and this is what pisses Red Skull off. So he's like, we have to kill the president or we have to brainwash the president. And one of the dudes that is in his cabinet is like Billy Madison's dad. Like, no bullshit. It's the same actor. Go look it up. I fucking laughed my dick off when I realized that's who it was. Red Skull has had fucking plastic surgery, so he doesn't have the red face for the rest of this movie. Like, the Red Skull that we saw in the beginning is as much as you're going to get out of that character. Which is so weird, because usually in comic book movies, it's the polar opposite. You usually get that shit at the very end. Yeah. And there's, like, all this exposition about how Red Skull's entire team over the last 50 years have been responsible for every fucking major assassination in the United States, from Martin Luther King Jr. to John F. Kennedy to Robert Kennedy to fucking Elvis Presley. In fact, he mentions that the assassination of Elvis cost $22 million. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, dude. I've seen movies with that kind of a budget. And they're just like, bro, fuck that movie. We got to kill the king. Yeah, like, why? <laughs> it just, uh, it's so fucking weird, though. Like, who the fuck wrote that in this fucking script, though? Nobody. Not a single soul. That screenwriter. Red Skull got to kill the king. Yeah, well, I, I tried to figure out. The reasoning? I, I don't know. I could not accept that, okay? And here's another thing. And I, dude, this is another moment where Devin was just fucking killing over. When he finally thaws out the ice and these people find him, okay? <laughs> First of all, he busts out this bitch and just, yeet, and just, just fucking leaves. He just hauls ass out of the fucking <laughs> ice and runs through the forest. There's, now, keep in mind, 1990, no maps on his person, no GPS. There's nothing to help this man. His first thought is, I'm just going to run all the fucking way home from Alaska, okay? <laughs> so this stupid son of a bitch is running, and somehow uh, the childhood friend with the glasses that didn't become president tracks him down in these woods and so does uh the the nazi team that comes to fucking try to kill him and they chase him on a motorcycle this man finds him in a pickup truck and rescues him after being fucking shot <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and let Devin take it from here because you all know what's fucking coming if you've seen this and this man's reaction was fucking everything he was literally just sitting in this man's truck who helped him he was probably about to you know be like Oh, hey, down the road, there, there's a nice diner if you want some coffee and some scrambled eggs, you know? Like, right. Like, he was sitting there just trying to inform him, like, hey, this has been going on the last 50 fucking years and all this shit. I forgot to point one thing out before you tell the rest of this shit. He's trying to get Cap to tell his story on a tape recorder, and, je and, and fucking Cap looks at it, and the camera makes it a point to zoom in and saying that the, the tape recorder is made in Japan and that the truck is a German-made vehicle. Now, bear in mind, this man just came from World War II era. So he already skeptical. Cap like looks around and you see the wheels in his head turning. You see his little wings flutter on his fucking hood. <laughs> He's like, I've got an idea. <laughs> he is plotting. He is a menace to society. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, can you pull over? I, I think I'm going to be sick. The man pulls over. Captain America steps out of the vehicle. He walks a few feet. He fucking gingerly bends over to mildly look like he's throwing up. But if, as the camera is showing him from the other perspective, he's really just plotting his next move. He's just fucking waiting, dude. 
and you see him. You, I, I, I swear on everything. <laughs> he almost breaks character and gets a shit eating grin on his face. You can see it on the actor's face. Yeah, dude. And the best part about it is he's already been through kind of so much shit that you ever like seen a drunk dude at like a fucking <laughs> Waffle House at two in the morning, bags under his eyes, sweating, five o'clock shadow. <laughs> that is Captain America. That's yeah, Steve Rogers, the, the guy who's like. All right, I should be calming down by now, but I'm just having fun at this point. <laughs> he fucking, he, the old man goes up to him. Are, are you all right? Captain America just fucking hauls ass towards the fucking vehicle and just steals it. He fucking Grand Theft Autos that motherfucker. And it was at that moment I was like, dude, that might be my new favorite Captain America. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see how the rest of this movie plays out. But... This guy, he's got something. Dude, and the fact that he he figures out to drive this truck all the way back to his home in California, okay? Well, I just left that bastard in the middle of nowhere. And I'm just laughing because he's getting a whole culture shock. Like, he sees these goth people on the beach, and then he sees this chick in a string bikini, and he's just like, oh, no, butt cheeks, and he fucking runs away from the butt cheeks. Because <laughs> he's going back home, because he's like, I gotta, I gotta find Bernice, because she said she was gonna wait for me. She old as fuck now, married to somebody new. Her daughter, who is played by the same fucking actress, beats the shit out of him with like a six pack of Cokes and fucking knocks him over. And all I got to say is way to fucking go because of all of this, because he went back home, uh, sin, I'm going to call her sin because it's based on the character sin in the comics uh, instead of Victoria or whatever the fuck her name is, the Red Skull's daughter. The old man finally gets to this house and he's like, I got to find Cap. And Bernice is like, no, he fucking shoots the old dude, kills him shoots the dad puts him in like a coma and fucking kills Bernice and they're just dead because Cap was like I need to go back good good job yeah <laughs> I had to fucking laugh at this too every Nazi in this movie drives a Mercedes Benz <laughs> every, really? every fucking one of them oh we drive German everything in this bitch like I don't care if we're in America it's, it's gonna be a German car brand loyalty at Kudos. Yeah, I know, right? Because, you know, it's, we're probably sitting here like, this is America. We drive Dodge and Ford in this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, like, if we went to fucking... Dude, if we decided to invade, we're going in with a fucking Dodge. And we're playing eastbound and down while we're doing it. It's a fucking Captain America shield as an ambulance on the car and everything. It's Exa like, god yeah. damn, dude. Yeah. America! Fuck yeah! yeah. They decide to figure out where the fuck. Oh, I got to figure out where my uh, my origin fucking chamber came from just so they can get this diary to figure out what the Red Skull's name is. So they just go to this diner and he busts through the women's restroom and it's buried behind the fucking women's restroom, dude. Like what the actual shit? I was just confused at that point. Yeah, I mean, it gets a little stupid in the mid act because like towards the end of the movie, they finally go to Italy and then he fucking does the same car trick to, to Sharon. Yeah, and it, it was at that moment, whenever he done it, <laughs> he fucking, <laughs> I was like, no, yeah, this is, this is my Captain America. So they finally make it to this goddamn castle, okay, because the president has been kidnapped at this point, and the final showdown is so dumb, because the president gets out of the cell on his own accord, like, he was gonna escape anyway, he didn't give a fuck. Cab shows up, and when I tell you my man Red Skull... Literally aged. <laughs> he aged the 50 years, mind you, okay? So by all intents and purposes, he should have been kind of fucked up, even though the super soldier serum turned him into this, mind you. That's why he was all fucked up in the first place. My man's just out there throwing jumping roundhouse kicks to Cap's face and just beating the piss out of him. Are we going to talk about the fucking, how he's rolling over while holding the shield? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at one point Cap gets the upper hand and... He's trying to fucking backflip away because Red Skull grabs a fucking like AK-47 and just starts shooting at him. And this is so corny. Like, you know, he's barrel rolling, holding the shield. At no point in this or any other film I've ever seen where people hold guns, did they ever aim for the lower half of the body that is not being covered by a fucking 20 by 20 shield? So at one point, Cap and the president just end up in this little small stairwell area, okay? And he introduces him. So he's like, I'm, I'm Steve Rogers, Mr. President. And he's like, oh, we've met. Hey, did you know that I met The Rock? Really? Well, actually, I mean, whenever I went to WrestleMania, he was just there. And I was like, probably the middle of the stadium. But I mean, 
We were in the same facility. The same so. building. It counts. Yeah. Yeah. I met him. That's pretty much how this president figures that he's met Captain America. Cause Cap is just kind of like, no, I don't believe we have. And so the president whips out the picture, the, you know, the crystal clear fucking photo that he took of him back Which in the forties is fucking ridiculous. And he's like, you were the little kid. And I'm like, how did you see him? Did you like turn your neck all the fucking way around? Because let's, let's flash back a little bit. And he's flying on this rocket. He is like facing upward towards the fucking sky. Okay, hold on. Also, how far did he fly? Pretty goddamn far, dude. Like across the continent. Yeah, think about it. He ended up in Alaska from DC. That is legitimately like across the United States, probably over Canada a little bit. So you're telling me that within all of those miles, he really only saw like one person? Because the way he said, you were that boy, implying you only saw one male figure. Not just that. If memory serves me correctly about this movie, the origin of that rocket was in Italy. Because didn't he go over there to find this motherfucker? Yeah. So this rocket had enough juice to launch from Italy to the White House to then get kicked off course and fly through Canada to Alaska. Bro, that's almost all the fucking way around the world. One boy. I, I, I'm telling you, dude, over that one fucking child. There's no goddamn way that happened. There's, you cannot convince me he didn't see any other motherfucker there. But anyway, after he introduces himself to the president, he throws his goddamn shield and knocks Red Skull off the side of the cliff where <laughs> he cheesily bounces off of every fucking rock. That's why I chuckle. He, he chucked gold at the fucking shield too because <laughs> the sin is there and she's about to shoot him and his girl and she's like yeah I'm about to kill your ass and he's just like heads up and then the shield hits her off camera and then he fucking breaks the fourth wall and leaves he fucking leaves and, that, and he, that's the end of the fucking movie I I was confused I, uh, fuck me too I just whatever dude it felt like They had a little bit more that they wanted to do, but they ran out of budget. So they were like, cut it. I don't think, uh, bro, three, three million dollars. Three million dollars. They probably wanted another 20,000 just to shoot an actual ending. And they were like, fuck no. Dude, look, the fact that we got Ronnie Cox in this movie who played the president, who was the main villain in RoboCop. We got fucking Ned Beatty. In this movie. I mean, fuck, but that's what we get for having Menahem Golan produce this shit, okay? So that explains it all. Not like Clarissa, but about as much as it's gonna. So we're gonna take a break and then we'll come back and talk about the Fantastic Four from 1994. Please don't go anywhere. Don't do it. Summer is coming, the sun is shining, shirts are off, and your balls are smooth. Or are they? They're not. They're very prickly. Oof. Well, in that case, our friends at Manscaped are here to make sure that your beach balls are as smooth as Floridian sand. Thank God. In the summer, you want to kill some cold beers and barbecues, not kill the vibe with pubes peeking out of your swim trunks, dude. So Manscaped is here with their performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive headfirst into summer by joining the 4 million other men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping with our code SUPER. Now what's in the performance package 4.0 you might ask? What's in the box? Calm down, calm down. I'll tell you what's in the box. Now! The performance package 4.0 includes their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It's a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It's also waterproof, from the shower to the lake, from your chest scruff all the way down to your ball fro. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the best trimmer around. You said ball fro, can I trim it down to a fade? Yeah, you could be your own certified barber, dude. Hell yeah. Once your downstairs area is taken care of, look after the rest with the Manscaped liquid formulations. Use the Crop Preserver ball deodorant to stay cool in the heat. It's got a soothing aloe vera formula and it's the best in the business for below the waist freshness. This clear drying formula keeps you in tip top shape at even the hottest barbecue. And that's gotta be some spicy barbecue. They're even gonna throw in two free gifts. I, I, I know you were kind of like hostile at first about what was in the box, but they're giving you free stuff, dude. Okay, cool. You're gonna get a pair of boxers in the shed travel bag. Are they comfy? Yeah, they're pretty damn comfy. 
In fact, it's going to bring your comfort game to the next level. And if you want to take your grooming game even further, take a look at the Manscaped Shears 2.0 package. Tell me more. It's got everything that you need to look pristine. It's got nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. Along with the performance package, your balls are going to be ready to impress. But make sure you cover the rest with the Shears 2.0, and you'll be ready to perform head to toe. Oh, that sounds so good. You know what else sounds good? Huh. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off, plus free shipping with our code SUPER. 20% off? Yeah, 20% off. And free shipping with our code SUPER at manscaped.com. 20%? That's like 10% times two. That's a lot. It is a lot. That's a good chunk. It is a good chunk. Okay. This is the summer to turn your package into the full package with Manscaped. Hey, this is Russ. This is Kyle. This is Michelle. From, From the Infectious, Infectious Groove Podcast. Podcast. Join us every Monday for the most fun you can have with a music podcast. The Infectious Groove Podcast uses a positive and fun approach as we take time every week to share our jammy jams, then dig into a thought-provoking topic discussing all decades and genres of music. You can find the Infectious Groove Podcast on all major podcast platforms, or you can head to infectiousgroovepodcast.com to find us there and subscribe. We might have a controversial opinion here or there, but we always have fun with it. Oh, I'm sure I'll say something dumb. Subscribe to the Infectious Groove Podcast, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. So we're back for a fantastic second half of this episode, and we're going to talk about the, like, literally, that's what it's called, the Fantastic Four. Not the crummy other generic Fantastic Four. No, this is the, the Fantastic Four. Whenever we say this is truly like a B-movie, like an independent made film, this is. This was produced by Roger Corman, and this is legitimately a movie that was made to not even be released, only so that this German studio that owned the rights to the movie could keep the rights to the movie. It's probably why Captain America was so angry at them. Dude, Stan Lee himself even said at one point during some kind of like con that he, he didn't really have much for this movie because this was still around the time where Marvel was just giving rights to studios to make movies like they weren't even involved really which is so weird like i understand it was the 90s and all of that stuff but it's just kind of like okay don't you want some kind of pull yeah like isn't it strange how the times have changed in the last 30 years where 30 years ago the marvel franchise stuff was very much in decline and marvel was actually on the verge of bankruptcy and now it's like a fucking multi-billion dollar thing dude like everybody fucking watches at least a couple of marvel movies yeah and the budget on this was a million bucks and you know what they they used it well you we, we have to admit it they really fucking did okay and there's some there's definitely some fucking flaws on this movie but that is oh, yeah. it's not you know anything else to do with the other than the fact that they they had to work with what they had so the plot is that Reed Richards and Victor Von Doom are in college and they're wanting to like do this experiment over this passing comet that's happening well to cut right to the chase cuz the movie just kind of doesn't even waste time uh Von Doom gets supposedly killed by this experiment because he's like electrocuted like a motherfucker and before this happens, I, I, I have to point this out because this does not sit right with me, okay? Oh, I know where this is going. Take the floor. Before this even happens, we learn about Reed living in a boarding house that's owned by Johnny and Sue Storm's mom, okay? So Johnny and Sue are obviously Human Torch and Invisible Girl or Invisible Woman, and he's living there. Now, bear in mind, he is in college, so we presume he may be like 19 to 21 years old, roughly, okay? He comes home excited about this experiment. It's obvious that he's pals with the kids because he lives there and shit, and he's, he's friends with Sue and Johnny's mom. So when he runs in the room, he's excited, and he hugs the kids, and he's like kissing the kids. He's like, I'm so excited. And then Sue asks him, she's like, you know, is, you know ask him how big of a deal this is, and he's like, it's one of the most important things in my life. And he runs upstairs. And she's like, he's so dreamy. And I'm like, dude, this child cannot be more than maybe like 12 to 14. And I actually went and looked at the, the kid actress's age during this fucking movie. The actor that played Reed Richards was 33. And the chick that played the kid was 13. To be fair, like 
a 13-year-old can have a crush on a 30-year-old. Right, but whenever... Whenever it's reciprocated... This is the point that we're trying to make, okay? So that's a thing, all right? Now, 10 years fucking later, Reed and Ben are going to try to recreate this entire fucking experiment. And Ben is like, okay, well, if you don't take Johnny and Sue with you, they're never going to forgive you. Because we assume that, like, because he tells it, they know about their experiments and all this shit more than any other people and students and shit. They go to the fucking storm house and Johnny is super excited. And then Reed is having this thought, like, I don't want to take them with me, blah, blah, blah. I can't fucking do it. As, and he's telling Johnny, he's about to tell him fucking no. And then he just happens to look up and see Sue come down the stairs, all grown up in a fucking dress. And, and she's <laughs> and she's giving him the fuck me eyes and he just looks up and gets an insta boner and he's just like, oh, yeah, y'all could come. <laughs> Bruh. How, long, how long you been playing in this? That's what I'm fucking saying. It's so gross, dude. Like, I, I don't even know. If, even if they didn't intend for that, it, it's still fucking there and it's disgusting. That That is the biggest fucking thing about this movie that I've got. Like, it, I'm not even looking for it. It's fucking there and it's gross to watch because it doesn't like i don't even give a fuck what they say the fact that he didn't come on to her she came on to him and he waited until she said something to be like oh yeah me too you sick bastard (laughs) fuck you because whenever they get older the actress that plays sue is actually two years younger than adult reed richards so it's like okay well that I can buy them as adults, but dude, if they really wanted to do it that way, why wouldn't they just write this character and her brother as a little older? Maybe they're two years younger. They're all in college together. Yeah, that would have that would not have altered the film whatsoever. Yeah, like they could have all been friends in college living in a board house together because it's cheap rent. Were they even fucking thinking about that? No. Why would you write those characters that young knowing that Johnny and fucking Sue are almost close to their age in the comics and the fact that Reed and Sue are married in the comics? What the fuck, man? Like that, that you, ugh, I'm having the aneurysm now. I can see that. Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to get through the rest of this fucking uh, are, are movie. Are you okay? Are you, yeah, you need I'm some gonna, water? No, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm fucking good. Because I can at least get to the more wholesome relationship in this one when they're going into this fucking uh, museum because they're trying to get this shit off the ground. Literally, it's a rocket. When Ben runs into Alicia Masters, because that's the relationship I give a fuck about because she's blind. He accidentally breaks her statue and then they're just like, oh, they're kind of awkward and it's cute. (laughs) There's like a subplot where this dude's trying to steal a fucking diamond and supposedly this diamond is what is going to be crucial to their experiment. So when they go to space and they don't launch the fucking ship correctly, they get caught in the comet and they try to get away and they crash land on earth and they have their powers and the doctor sequence is what makes me laugh the most because they get fucking taken in by quote marines when it's actually von doom's people coming to capture them because von doom is alive as dr doom and he wants to take their blood goop and make a superhuman out of it because he's like colossus lives within them and i'm like oh y'all trying to make colossus okay i see what you're doing (laughs) see these people had heart in this movie they were trying to make legit comic references to other characters and build a world probably or maybe sequel shit unfucking fortunately we we were not going to get that so they're in these doctor rooms and this is where you see all the powers happen now the funny part is when ben tries to sit down on the chair (laughs) fucking just falls he crashes through the chair (laughs) and just plants onto the ground and the funniest part is like his limbs just fucking flop yeah, he's just so dumb with this shit. He's like, God damn it. I'm literally a rock with feet. <laughs> Dude, and I got to admit, though, I really have to admit the the thing costume. It looks fantastic. No pun intended. It looks great. There's a mechanical mouthpiece that moves and they really did try to make it as identical to issue number one as possible. Mm-hmm. So this doctor is just like, oh, you're going to take your own blood because he can't get blood out of Sue, Johnny or Ben. So this is when you see Reed stretch his arm and grab the syringe and you're just like, what the fuck? So they plan their escape and then they run into doom and bro, that fight sequence in that little dark lit area where they're kind of all showing their powers off and fucking Sue goes invisible and they fucking (laughs) she just sort of like bends over so that they (laughs) miss her and I'm like, "Uh, I mean, it, it works, but this is kind of, um, a weird fight scene. Not the weirdest, though. 
No, that that goes to a different fight scene where they fucking like edit this thing to like spin around like the whole fucking camera spins. I forgot about that shit. Yeah, so they're tr- they're they're escaping this room. This is before they get into the fight scene in that little dark area with the Von Doom army. Yeah. And I tried to tell Dev and I said, "Look at this fucking edit." And he swore up and down that that's got to be a mistake. I'm like, no, they really fucking edited it like this, dude. I thought for sure the person that uploaded the movie onto YouTube did that just to fuck with somebody. It, no, that was really it, dude. That was their way of getting around Ben Grimm beating the fuck out of somebody along with two other people in a fucking room. And he's just like, okay, what else needs to be done? <laughs> like, like, would the costume not hold? Like, is that what it is? I don't know. I think they were just trying to like, save film on this budget because they like you gotta understand like behind the scenes dude they didn't even have like roger corman didn't even have them like with a monitor to see what they shot like so they couldn't even look at dailies (laughs) when they were shooting this dead serious they could dude there was no table read on this script or anything there was nothing they literally showed up with the script no fucking uh monitor for the dailies and they just went for it and this is the more fucked up part they were like oh nobody's ever gonna see this yeah little do they know but seriously, they showed up with nothing to work with. They, they show up, shoot, and go. Hell, at one point, I was watching a documentary about this, and I think the chick that played Sue Storm said, yeah, all the clothes in there were my clothes. Like, we wore our, sh- our own shit to the set. And I think like, the only thing they provided for them to wear was, like, the hazmat suits when they were in the prison, the actual Fantastic Four costumes, and her wedding dress. I had to laugh at one sequence, though, because... <laughs> There was a scene where Doom finds out they're alive and he's so goddamn mad. Like he's just he's fucking screaming and shit. And then right after that happens, Alicia Masters, because she's blind and had to feel Ben's face to see what he looked like. She's making these clay models of his face and she's getting like all like horny moany. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus, fuck, dude. It's so funny, though. (laughs) It's fucking hilarious. Well, I mean, to be fair, he was a rock hard. He was that man. Yeah, he, he, the thing. I just I cannot get over that fight where Reed Richards stretches his entire leg across that opening <laughs> and trips they just they're fucking like lemmings. They're just <laughs> face planting one after another. He's in a bright yellow hazmat and they can't see that shit. And the thing is just smashing everybody. I swear to God, he says it's clobber in time. I think maybe four times in the movie. They had to make sure they got at least one for the trailer. I mean, a little bit of overkill there. I, I think we would have done just fine with just one time, but okay. No, because I mean, th- we'll think about the fact that they use the same cut for uh, Johnny Storm throwing the fireball. Yeah. It, oh, no. The, Johnny it, Storm, bro. Whatever he fucking went all out. <laughs> Yo, the Dude. second time they fucking went. <laughs> bro, I fucking, I transcended. I don't know. Uh, you you probably transcended like he did because, okay, so the plot is like Doom is going to fire a laser that is going to destroy New York City, okay? And it's powered by the same diamond that they were trying to use on their comet experiment, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it because Doom is just like, fuck this. I'm going to do it myself. Like, he, he sends his henchmen to steal this fucking diamond and they don't do it. And they're like, we, we couldn't do it. And he's like, I'll do it myself. And he fucking does. Like, he rolls in that bitch and he's got an army and they, he just fucking shoots everybody. He's like, mm, I guess I'll take this diamond. And he fucking goes <laughs> and he gets the damn thing launched. Like, the laser is going. There's no fucking stopping. Even though the Fantastic Four are in costume, which Sue made, by the way, they're beating the piss out of all these people. And Richards gets up on the platform and it's almost like in Batman and Robin when they can't stop the freeze ray happening. He literally is like, we're out of time. I can't stop it. He's got literally five fucking seconds. And then Johnny Storm is just, I think I got this guys. And they're just what? And he just <laughs> he goes the way. It fucking looked. I just fucking stared at that fucker. That motherfucker looked like code Lyoko. That boy looked like big fat, but ugly Martians. <laughs> You remember Tron? Like the nineteen yeah. like the nineteen eighty two. Yeah, yeah. The graphics in that movie looked better than this, okay? And not only that, when he's in full form as human torch and he's flying to catch up with the actual tip of the laser beam that is firing, this shit looks like master controller. And then when he gets fucking hit and he's just like it's like one shot of 
him like fully like animated, like spinning his limbs in circles, and but he's spinning backwards in a fucking circle. No, no. <laughs> It's like if you fucking like had an overhead shot of somebody on their side, like fucking spinning, like break dancing on some cardboard. <laughs> like just, it's so dumb. I fucking loved it. The first time I ever saw this, I fell out of my fucking couch on the floor, just holding my stomach, crying, laughing because I could not believe that. The, and granted, they, they, they tried their hearts out for this movie. They really thought that this was going to get released in theaters. I cannot imagine people paying a ticket to see this movie. And then that scene comes up because you would have everybody in the theater collectively on the floor, holding their stomachs, crying, laughing. Here's my question, though. If it did get released. What do you think the box office return would have been? Dude, you know what the fucked up part is? They probably would have made their budget back. That's what I'm getting at. Like, even if it was three million, that's still, by all intents and purposes, a flop. But you tripled your production budget. Like, technically speaking, that would have been a success enough to warrant a sequel. But then it would have been like, what would the reputation have been like? What, how how would audiences have felt? I don't know because I mean, dude, Jurassic Park got fucking released the same year that this would have come out. Oh, that. Oh, okay. So with that in mind, market the fuck out of it being a cheese fest. I don't know. No. They couldn't have done it like that. No. In fact, they even said that in the documentary. They're like, well, we couldn't do it because like Tom Cruise is like a walking billboard. So like you see, put his name on something and it sells the movie. They didn't have any like really high end actors they could do that with. So they had to, you know, do the silhouette. Like if you look at one of the promotional posters, it's just the four of them standing on like a mound of like grass, but it's the silhouette of them lit up in flames and stretching and rock and, and visibility. And that's how you market this. Yeah. With the actual superheroes. Yeah. And I love how the release date says, Never <laughs> on it. Does it really? Yeah. Aww. Yeah. But like in the, in the movie is doom is going to be threatened to be clobbered by fucking thing. And Reed winds up fighting him after the laser shot. And dude, the overhead shot where he's like stretch punching him and shit. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Like they yeah. did work with what they had. Oh yeah. Yeah. So both villains in both of these movies fell to their deaths. Okay. So he punches he punches Doom over the fucking railing of this like building piece and he catches this bar and then Von Doom just starts fucking with Reed's mind. He's like, we were friends once before. Why won't you save me? And so he stretches his arm to save him, but his fucking his his arm comes off like his gauntlet comes off and he falls to his death and he's just laughing the whole way down. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Y'all both don't fell to your death. Doom was pretty, pretty good. though. Doom was lit in this movie. OK, like, I. I actually enjoyed him unironically no same dude like joseph culp the guy that played him did fantastically yeah again no pun intended was amazing and the final shot of this movie really <laughs> cracks me the fuck up okay so these bastards go off and reed and sue finally marry except for sue who is in a wedding dress the rest of them are still in their fantastic four get up including the thing in his fantastic four wrestling trunks like we're talking like speedo thing, not in the new one with the long pants or no naked long boys the, Yeah, no long boys. He's got the trunks on. He's ready to clap some rock cheeks with his blind lady and Reed Richards. His giant fucking dingus ass arm is just out of the fucking rooftop of this limo waving by and you can clearly see the string holding it up, waving it. It's the most fantastic fourth thing I've ever heard. It, yeah, it, that, that's that's it. That that is that is this whole. This is this is the movie. Th this is the Fantastic Four, and <laughs> there's a couple of lines that got fed in this movie. Speaking of Doom, so there was there was supposed to be the Mole Man in this movie. Okay, okay. So they couldn't afford him, or they couldn't even have him because of the rights. So they wrote the Mole Man, but they renamed him the Jeweler, and he's the guy that was in a subplot trying to steal this diamond from Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four. He also tried to kidnap Alicia. So the thing goes to her rescue. And at one point he's holding her hostage with a gun because they have the diamond and he fucking looks at doom and he goes touch it. And she dies and doom. I swear to God just looks at her and goes, so 
<laughs> I swear to fuck, like I fucking died when that happened. I was like, he don't give a shit, dude. Like he don't give a fuck. So. <laughs> And that's the fucking doom that I love. So you found your cap and your doom. So we need to get that cap in this Dr. Doom like against each other. Oh my God, dude. I would pay so much money to see that. Where's the Kickstarter? I'll, I'll do it right now. I'm same fucking same dude. And, and here's kind of the fucked up part. When, whenever you watch, there's a documentary on YouTube about this. It's called doomed. The untold story of Roger Corman's fantastic four in this documentary. You find out some things like literally that, the cast and crew put in their entire heart and soul into this for the money that they had. And they were all told it was going to be in theaters. And then after it all got fucking made, nope, nothing. You know who else was approached before uh, they wound up with this uh, Roger Corman shit? Who? Lloyd Kaufman of Troma. Really? They approached Lloyd Kaufman about doing this movie. And then Lloyd said he would have done it, but he said he was friends with Stanley. And not only did he not want to fuck it up, because of Stan, he didn't want to do a disservice to these characters or Troma's fans or Marvel's fans. Like Lloyd is a good dude for that. Like he knew he was like, I could have made it for a shitload of money and made a shitload of money. He was like, but I didn't want to fucking do a disservice to the characters or Marvel's fans or Troma's fans. And God fucking damn it, dude. Lloyd's the shit. Yeah. You know, wow. his, like, his own movies, he doesn't give a shit. He's going to just go balls out, but he had enough respect for the material and Stan to just be like, no, I'm not going to do that. So yeah, have fun with those fun factoids. I feel like the Fantastic Four movie has to win this week. And that's purely because of the trials and tribulations the cast and crew went through to make it. Only to be kind of fucked over at the end. That's not to say that it wasn't crappy, but I feel like this movie had so much more heart in it than the Captain America one did. The Captain America one felt just too cash grabby, while this one felt like they were trying to make an actual Fantastic Four movie. So, yeah. Surprisingly, the Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie wins this week's Cult Cinema Showdown. Got anything else, sir? Uh, no. Nah, I just gotta go pack. I'm leaving out in the morning. Going to Chicago. Yeah, we're starting our vacation. So, uh, yeah. Just know that we, we are doing this just so you can have some fucking content. Yeah, we recorded like fucking four episodes this week. Mm-hmm. And I'm fucking tired. Yeah, me too. We're gonna and, and this there's the fucked up part. We're gonna we're gonna do more in a couple. So yeah, y'all y'all getting y'all's entertainment out there. So visit supermediabrospodcast.com to listen to past, present, and future episodes. Visit oddpodsmedia.com for all the other shows on the Odd Pods Media Network. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Buy some motherfucking merchandise. Follow us on social media. Leave us a rating and review on Good Pods, Pod Chaser, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Y- you know the drill. Just go do the shit. And ladies, you can reach me at at Dubra007 on Instagram. D-A underscore bra 007. That's right. <laughs> now we're going to get on a rocket along with Steve Rogers and we're going to get yeeted the fuck out of this motherfucker. Yeet. Yep. Gone. Fucking gone. Thanks for chilling out with us, everybody. This was Cult Cinema Showdown 97 Captain America versus the Fantastic Four. Until next time, I'm Richie. I'm Devin. Shades on. We're off.